Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Kaufman, and we're about to go Beyond the Terminus. Today, we're going to take a few extra minutes over the usual Beyond the Terminus time to discuss the concept of extra-radicular infection. We all have anodontic cases that fail. Most often, it's because we're unable to deal with the complicated canal system anatomy that's presented to us. Root canal systems are anatomically complex, and cleaning them is a really big challenge. Sometimes the radiographic appearance of our treatment seems as close to the optimal result as we can get, especially in what we would consider easy, single root, single canal cases. Yet the cases don't respond as we had hoped, and while the 2D or 3D radiographic appearance may be a poor proxy for judging anodontic success, other than the lack of symptoms in our patient, we really don't have many other tools to help us in our evaluation of our treatment, especially of failed cases. Furthermore, more intensive study of failed cases invariably involves extraction of the tooth, which really doesn't help the patient very much, does it? I was fortunate enough to be taught by one of the endodontic giants of the 20th century, Dr. Herbert Schilder. I was one of the approximately 400 postgraduate students who were privileged to be educated by him during his tenure at Boston University. At the time, it was considered one of the finest postgraduate endodontic clinical teaching programs in the world. Up until the late 1970s, endodontics had a reputation for less than optimal predictability. Schilder came up with a rule that changed the game forever. We were taught that the potential for the attachment apparatus and periapical areas of the tooth to heal was 100%. The 100% minus X role defined X as your ability or your inability to deal with the anatomy of the root canal system that you were treating. If the tooth was periodontally sound, or could be made so, and we could adequately deal with and treat the canal anatomy, there was no excuse for the area not healing. With that understanding, the concept of endodontics just not working sometimes was rendered passe. These cases would heal just as surely as if the tooth was extracted and the tooth structure along with the offending root canal system was removed from the patient. Clean, shape, and obturate the canals and the cases would heal every time. A fellow Boston University graduate, Dr. Danny Bellamy, wrote about the 100 minus X rule in his Irish Dental Journal article in July, August, 2012. In essence, what we were trying to do was to fool the body into believing that the root canal system no longer existed. And if we could do that well enough, the body would heal. Sometimes you were unable to deal with the difficult canal system anatomy. And in that case, surgical removal of this area of the root was necessary to allow the case to heal. This philosophy has taken a bit of a hit recently by those who say that the clinical radiographic appearance is only part of the story and that using the look of the case as a proxy for how well the case has been treated is foolish and misleading. The concept of whether a case has healed or not, as measured by the radiographic appearance, has also undergone re-evaluation, especially in the era of CBCT imaging. Many cases that we thought looked healed in conventional radiography showed persistent radiolucent findings when examined with a CBCT. The disease versus disease that matters topic is dealt with in another video in this series. Please consult that video for a more complete discussion of defining endodontic success. The 100% minus X rule was extremely powerful because it placed the obligation on the clinician, which was part of the Boston University endodontic teaching. The knowledge that the success of the case was, placed, was based entirely on your clinical skills placed the responsibility for success squarely on the person performing the treatment. Perhaps that's why it was so vexing to me when cases that I had completed and which looked good radiographically just didn't resolve properly. For many years after my specialty graduation in the mid-1980s and into the early 1990s, this seemed very, very troubling. I would occasionally find that my oral surgery colleagues would see such cases and merely cut off the root to the level of the radiolucency and the area healed perfectly. In almost all of these surgical interventions, there was no concern about the canal system, retrograde preparation of the canal, or retrofilling by the oral surgeon. Merely an unsophisticated lopping off of the end of the root solved the problem. How could this be? In 1987, one year after my graduation, Tronstad Barnett et al. published a monumental paper describing 
what was known as extra-radicular endodontic infections. These findings were published in the Journal of Endodontics and Traumatology, 1987, Volume 3, pages 86 to 90. Since that time, I have become friends with one of the co-authors of the paper, Dr. Fred Barnett. Dr. Barnett teaches the postgraduate program at Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. I have mentioned this paper to him on many occasions over the years, but I think Fred is far too modest about the implications of what I believe to be very important research. The original paper said that anaerobic bacteria are able to survive and maintain an infectious disease process in the periapical tissues along the root surface. The slang terminology for this infection was apical plaque because when it was exposed surgically, it appeared to have a plaque-like or a calculus-like substance that was covering the affected root. The study examined the findings of eight patients who had teeth with periapical radiolucencies that were refractory to root canal treatment. Several had long-standing draining sinuses. Probings were normal and all patients were asymptomatic and never experienced discomfort at all from these teeth. The initial conclusions of the study were that anaerobic bacteria were able to survive and maintain an infectious disease process in the periapical tissues after conventional endodontic treatment. At the time the study was published, the implications of this observation were not immediately known. Subsequently, more studies were performed in 1990 by the same two lead authors. This time, the root tips were found to be covered with a continuous, smooth coating adjacent to the apical foramen. The examination of this layer showed a variety of bacterial forms. Bacterial plaque was observed in the irregularities of the surface between the fiber bundles and the cells in the crypts and holes. The bacteria were held together by an extracellular material and the plaque was dominated by cocci and rods. One of the conclusions was that this structureless material, both apically and marginally, was a combination of a bacteria-produced extracellular product, as well as components reflecting the local inflammatory reaction. What was even more interesting was that their biological studies of refractory periapical lesions found bacteria that were not considered common oral bacteria. Therefore, it was possible that hematologic spreading of bacteria to long-standing periapical lesions could occur. At the time, the exact mechanisms of how these plaques were formed were not completely understood. The term biofilm was eventually coined by Nobel Prize winner Bill Costerton in 1985. He showed that adhering and non-adhering biofilm infections were widespread in medicine. The reason that these refractory cases didn't heal was that endodontic treatment Dealing with the internal structures of the root canal system was any effective in treating this biofilm on the outside of the root end that was causing persistent apical pathology. Simply removing this plaque-covered biofilm area of the root by my oral surgical colleagues during resection was a successful strategy because it removed the biofilm that could not be dealt with by conventional endodontic treatment. To me, the implications were profound it explained why some cases simply did not respond to conventional treatment and required surgery. And it preserved the concept of 100% minus X when it came to conventional endodontic treatment. Finally, I had my answer as to why those stubborn cases that did not heal the way I wanted were easily treated by mere resection of the roots. I dedicate this video to my friend, Dr. Fred Barnett, co-author of the research one of Endodontics' best educators, and a man I consider my friend. Thanks, Fred. Your research made a difference in my life. Thank you for watching this version of Beyond the Terminus. Remember, when we do the right thing, both of us get better, patients and clinicians. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I look forward to our next trip when we go Beyond the Terminus. See you then.